CrossFit is not just for young, fit athletes. A common misconception is that CrossFit is only for young people. That once you hit 50, you should be looking at mild alternatives such as cycling or golf for your exercise regime. This could not be more wrong. CrossFit in my mind being the optimal training method for building fitness is exactly what I would prescribe for anyone looking to improve their quality of life as they age. It is no surprise that as we age, if we continue the same activities, we will see a decline in our fitness levels. If we look at the world records for a range of sports from weightlifting, track and field, and endurance sports, you will see that the average decline in each of these is around 10% per decade from age 30, or 1% per year. But before you get too disheartened, we need to consider some factors regarding this data. Firstly, the participation numbers in all sports have a rapid decline from age 30. Therefore, the pool of athletes to choose from is far smaller, especially as we get to the 50 plus age categories. Also, all age world record holders normally retire from the sport close to their peak. So the standard of athletes competing will be lower. It would be very unusual to see athletes such as Usain Bolt, Eddie Hall, and other world-class athletes continue to compete later in life. From that, we can determine that a portion of the decline will be down to the general standard of competition being lower. Another factor to consider is the reduction in training volume. So aside from professional golf, there are very few sports you can make a career of in the master's categories. Most athletes competing are going to be doing so on a lighter training schedule than that of a professional athlete. They will unlikely have the resources for their training, whether that be financial, equipment, facilities, or coaching. With all of these factors, we can take an assumption that the reduction of performance will be lesser than the world records suggest. The level of decline is also vastly greater for the elite athletes. They're relying on working at the pinnacle of human capabilities for their sport, and therefore any biological effect caused by aging will impact them the most. And also they are training at their peak at 100% capacity, working on their limit, their training volume, recovery protocols, nutrition, etc. This le level of dedication cannot be sustained for several decades later in life. There will never be some drop off. So if we break down the population into categories, we start with the elite, that's the 99th percentile. Those guys would have 10 years or more training experience. We go down to the next level down, we have an advanced athlete in the 95th percentile with greater than five years training. Then we have intermediates, which is about the 85th percentile upwards, two to four years of training, and novice athlete, with, which will be about the 65th percentile, so sort of top third, and they're about one or two years of training. I'm looking mainly at sort of people that are doing a sport regularly. We then can consider the physically active, that's the 25th percentile, someone maintaining around 30 minutes of activity three to five times a week, and the inactive, which is the bottom quarter percentile with minimal activity levels. As you can see, as we move down the various levels of athletes, the slope of decline becomes shallower, with the least fit seeing the shallowest decline in performance. We will therefore see the slowest decline in those that are physically inactive, mainly because their start level is so low that they can't decline much further. Keep in mind though, if you've watched my previous episode on the fitness, wellness, sickness continuum, those that are least conditioned are always teetering on the edge of sickness, whether that be chronic disease, musculoskeletal problems, or trauma caused by accidents. Each year, this degradation in their fitness will bring their chances of one or all of these issues arising. So we don't want to be in the physically inactive category just because we can't drop too far. Now, the great news is that we can jump up levels. If all levels of athlete continue to train, eat, and live in the same way as they have previously, we will see that steady decline in fitness across the board. However, if we make changes to our training, our nutrition, and our lifestyle, we would aim to jump up levels and get fitter as we age. In my own experience as a coach, I have seen athletes in their 70s and 80s see their strength levels more than double, their work capacity increase by a similar degree, and their ability to move improve 
dramatically. So their ability to move will improve dramatically. If we take the rule of thumb that it take 10 years to reach the peak of any sport, theoretically, it would be possible for someone to implement the right training, lifestyle, and nutrition that would take them from an inactive 70-year-old to an elite level 80-year-old athlete. So elite for that age. This is an extreme example where numerous factors could inhibit this. Someone going from completely inactive up until 70 would likely have health factors that would affect their training and progress. But a realistic scenario would be people moving up two to three levels to a fitter population group. With well-coached training, there is no reason why that person cannot achieve remarkable results. A simple check of the world records can show that it's completely possible for an 80-year-old to be fitter than a 30-year-old. If you look at the one kilometer indoor row record, that's three minutes 33. And if you get on the row and try to hit that time, you'll see how good a time three minutes 33 for 1K is. The squat row record for a 70 plus athlete at 83 kilos is 190 kilos, and they deadlift 260 at that age. In the CrossFit Games, Masters champion Dave Hipperstill has completed the workout for in 3.37, faster than all but one of our athletes in the gym, and he would destroy most advanced level CrossFitters going head to head. And it's the same on the girls' side too. So in conclusion, top level athletes can slow the decline by continuing to train, but many of us can actually reverse our decline and become fitter as we age. I, for one, am really excited with my own training. I know that I can still see a ton of improvements going forwards, even being 43 now. Every day I'm learning new things about myself. And as I move towards my mid forties, I consider my fittest days still lie ahead. The specifics of how I suggest we go about getting fitter later in life, I will cover in future episodes. But the simple answer from my point of view is to start CrossFit. When we come and train at CrossFit, we scale every single workout to fit every single athlete, matching the stimulus of the workout, to the correct level of relative intensity. And my advice for older athletes is the same for everyone who starts with us. Leave your ego at the door, compete and compare yourself with only yourself and listen to your body when it tells you to go slow or rest. So today could be the day you decide to take yourself off the downhill slope of decline and start leveling up your fitness. Let's do it.